Three, two, one. Good day everyone, Garage King here, and today we are going to review the Xtool D5S and we are going to try it on this vehicle and maybe another one. Now I just want to say before we begin, I did review the D7S. It was a much higher price point at about $4.59 if you can get a coupon. And the D5S is a lot cheaper. It's about half price at $1.99 plus you can get a coupon, at least for now. Anyway, let's take a look. So we can see it's got no camera. Flip open the flap on the top and you can see an expansion slot and your USB-C charging port. And it does come with the charge cord. Now, if we want to see exactly how big this sucker is, well, let's get out the measuring tape and see. So we can see we have about six inches. I guess it's fine, but the actual viewing area, if you're looking, is close to about five and a half inches. So that's what we have for viewing area. What's in the box, you might ask? Well, your OBD2 cable, your USB-C cable for charging, and you got a quick start guide that you really don't need. It is pretty easy. Once you power it up, you're asked to log on or register. So I chose to register anyway. I didn't think it was a big deal. I don't know if you have to or not. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect to Wi-Fi and obviously you're gonna update it because your scanner is going to need to be updated. So once that's updated, that is great. Your scanner is ready to go. Now, the one thing I wanted to talk about is the menu rundown. So the one thing I do like about X tools is I find they are very, very easy to use. There's your diagnosis and that'll take you into the brand of the vehicle. Then we can click on OBD2. And if you look at this, please uh, wait, you know, communication has got to be established. We're not plugged in, so we actually can't use it. We will use it though, you'll see. And then you have your special functions. So these are all of your resets and I'm just scrolling through here so you can see them all. Let's go back. And now we can check for updates and we shouldn't have any because we just updated everything and let's wait and see. There you go. We are latest updates. So we are good to go there. And then if we click on more, there's just your account diagnostic report and your settings. So even if you click on the settings right in here, it'll just so tell you your Wi-Fi connection. You can adjust brightness date, stuff like that. So you know what? Now that this is out of the way, let's see how it actually works. So let's try it on this Porsche and see, you know, let's see what it'll do. So here we are back at the main menu. Now I'm gonna try the auto scan. I'm gonna see what comes up. So we're gonna hit auto scan, please wait, it is connecting. So I want automatic detection. So I'm just gonna hit the automatic detection right there. And it did, it pulled up the Porsche. So that is awesome. So let's see what it finds. So it's gonna do a full system scan and it says three out of five, four out of five, you can see on the side there and five out of five. It did find a few problems with the old Porsche. Surprise, surprise. So let's start at the bottom. Let's just look at airbag very briefly. And the reason I wanted to go into airbag is to be honest, I didn't know what this thing was gonna read. So it actually reads quite a bit and keep in mind, it's gonna vary depending on what the manufacturer releases. So this is just what it will read on this Porsche. If you have something else, it may read, you know, some different things. So let's get out of here and let's go back up and let's see the parking brake because we got an error with our parking brake. So let's read our trouble code and see what's happening and if we look there, it says released when vehicle starts, not available. So what this could mean is our parking brake is out of spec. It looks like I'll have to check the parking brake to see if I can fix that. Just trying to clear the code now and we'll go back and see if we can actually clear it. And yes, parking brake right at the bottom. There you go, you can see everything's cleared. So let's go into the ECM and let's see what type of codes we have in the ECM. So we're gonna wanna read the trouble codes and let's see what is going on inside this Porsche. So we have two codes now, reluctant fuel tank temperature sensor and a bypass valve for the EGR. So let's play around with the scanner a little bit more and then you know what, we're gonna try to clear the codes and see if it'll clear these engine codes. Anyway, let's look at all data for, for live data streams. That's what I'm trying to go for right now. And you can see here it is loading, so that's all right. Let's scroll down a bit and see how fast they come up and you can sort of see them popping in. So they're not instant. Once you scroll up, there you go. You can see I've scrolled up more and right to the bottom. You gotta wait a second and then they do pop in and there they are. So you got 137 on this Porsche, but keep in mind all manufacturers are going to be slightly different. Here is what the graphing looks like. So you can see there's our throttle start and we're mapping it out. So have no issues with the graphing and it seems to update rather quickly. If I type this or push that end button, you can see it collapses. So very easy to use. Let's try to map something that's gonna maybe move around a little bit more. So what shall we find? There's a good one engine torque. So give the vehicle a bit of a rev and you can see how it maps it out. So that's a general overview of the mapping and you know what, it's just fine. So now you know what, let's go back and see if we can clear that pesky code. So we're going to go into the ECM, we're going to click clear trouble code. Yes, we want to clear it. Yes. And you know what, we're going to go back. It tells us it's cleared successfully, but let's go back to see if it is in fact cleared. And yes, it is. 
So that is just awesome. Now, if anyone recognizes this vehicle, it's been in a bunch of my videos and just love it. It is a classic Honda Civic. Let's go to the tool and see what it'll read. Let's try an auto scan, auto detect. This isn't an old one, three pin, it's a 16 pin. We're in Canada. Automatic scan. It says three of five, so I'm assuming there's two more coming. There we go. Oh, it said electronic parking brake and then disappeared. So, and this one does not have that. It actually just has the regular parking brake right here. So I guess it maybe thought it had it, but it doesn't have it. So let's check out here engine. Go on live data, see what we get. Let's start the engine so we don't kill our battery. Grab this, graph this. All right, and let's give it a little rev. I know you guys are getting excited, especially you folks that love Honda Civics. Just listen to that Japanese engine. So that is awesome. So basically, same thing as a Porsche. It's going to have a whole bunch of PIDs that you can do. And keep in mind, they are dependent upon what the manufacturer is going to release. And you saw them, here they are. They're popping in, same thing as a Porsche. Once you scroll up, you wait a second and then all of the information will pop in. Let's look at what else we can pull up. See what it'll read from the transmission. And yes, if you caught that, I did speed it up. It was four times just for the sake of this video, but the scanner, I wanna say, is not slow by any stretch. Here's our D indicator, so let's see what happens if I put it in drive. And there you go, you can see it is open. Let's put it back in park. So maybe let's check out the anti-lock brakes and see what we can find in the anti-lock brake section here. So hopefully, at least I'm hoping that we will be able to get speed sensors and possibly some switches. So let's see, there you can see at the top, there is our brake switch. You can see there, that's just me pushing the brake pedal down. So it's reading our brake switch. It's got the wheel speed sensors. So I'm impressed with that, and for this price point, I think that's a pretty good thing. So let's go to the reset. So say, for example, if you want to reset our oil. So maintenance here, you can see them in the maintenance here, reset oil life. Now on a Honda, you really can't, as it's got to be done on, through the buttons to the left of the steering wheel. So I'm just curious what the scanner will tell me if I try to force the scanner to do it, because I, I honestly don't believe you can do it. And here it's communicating. And there you can see auto reset failed. Please try manual reset. Just what I thought. So this Honda, it's an older one. It's an eighth gen. 2006 so there's really not a lot you can reset on this Honda. So what did I think of the Xtool D5S scanner? Well you know what this scanner will read all your modules from your ECM to your ABS to your transmission modules it'll read everything so it's easy to diagnose it is not bi-directional however it does have quite a few reset features for particular vehicles. So my advice would be to check your vehicle and see if this has coverage for your vehicle for reset features if you're looking to reset. Uh, most of the vehicles, I believe it should reset. Uh, this Honda here doesn't have a lot of reset. Everything's gotta be done manual anyway by pushing these buttons. So that's why the scanner didn't do it. So no fault of the scanner. So I think in summary, you know what? I think it's a good deal though. For the price point, it bridges a gap uh, between more expensive bi-directional scanners because for $200, you get quite a bit. And what I probably should have mentioned earlier in the video is it does even have lifetime updates. So you just buy it and you're never going to have to pay anything ever again. So. Anyway, that is it for the video. So hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments like that, please leave them below. That is it for this week. Garage King over and out.